Hey guys, Huz here, bringing you another video, this time a commentary on Diana Mid. Uh, now, I've been busy the past couple days, and uh, with university starting soon, uh, I'm going to get into making a kind of a, a proper schedule for the whole YouTube thing, and I will come out with a channel update probably not this weekend, next weekend, uh, once I've completed my first full week of university, just so I get a feel of it. Um... But yeah, I haven't done a mid-commentary in a little bit, so I thought, you know, I've got quite a lot of commentaries to do. I've got about five others to do, uh, but I decided to, you know, kind of skip ahead to a, get a, a mid-lane one, and it was between Nidalee and Diana, and I chose this game as Diana, as I vaguely remembering it going okay, uh, and pretty good pointers, uh, especially playing against a Orianna, which I know is still a, quite a popular pick when it comes to solo queue. Uh, now, Diana, me and Diana have, uh, well... I used to play Diana quite a, a fair bit. Currently this season ranked, I've only played seven games with her, and I'm currently 6-1. Uh, so not a bad um, ratio, you know, but it, I haven't played a lot of games to quantify having, you know, a very high win rate on her. Um, but I would say she is one of my favourite champions. I would, you know, if I get into her quite a lot, I really do like playing Assassins. If you watch my stream and that, I'll always kind of go to Zed or that type of champion. I'm probably going to start playing Kassadin a lot more, uh, seeing that the success that Xpeke has had with him in Worlds. And Diana is also a very, very good champion when it comes to playing against something like an Orianna, uh, a Nidalee, something like that, that can poke you down a little bit in lane. And I will go over some things that, you know, can help you out when you're against someone that can poke you. Um, but as I said, Diana is a very good champion in general. You know, when you build her to the right damage uh, scaling or the right item, sorry, you can jump in the middle of a team fight, pop your Zonyas, you're fine, and your team can basically catch up. You can be an engager on Diana. You cannot play Diana passively because that will actually get you behind. Uh, now, expect to be relatively, well, if you're against a ranged champion, you know, don't expect to be ahead in CS. I will say that. And on most things, obviously, Zed is a little bit of a different uh, case because you can use your shadows and, you know, farm with Q in quite a good way uh, to maintain good CS. And a lot of things when you're like level 6 are really scared of you when you're playing Assassin. Um, so pre 6, you have to look to be just a bit, you know, a little bit careful. Uh, but after level 6, you, you're pretty safe. Uh, so this lane against Orianna, you want to max your W. Now, maxing W on or, uh, on Diana sorry, is actually a very good tool. And it's a tip that I actually give on Orianna a lot of the time. If you know that your matchup is quite a difficult matchup, uh, then maxing your shield is actually a really good thing to do. Now, right now, if you look on the map, we have an Udyr jungle, and he's probably watched Trick 2G. Um, so he's very familiar with getting level 2 very early on Udyr, going Tiger Stance, and looking for the invade, especially against an Amumu that does barely nothing early game. So we're looking if we can get anything going here. Uh, Orianna is basically also running out of lane. Obviously with me and Orianna being out of lane, we are missing the CS, so I move back in to XP range and CS. Uh, but Elise comes down to help the Amumu try and do the blue, but Udyr stays around, which yeah is, is a standard Udyr jungle thing to do. Elise is looking, come ba looking to come back um, to help the Udyr. Shen is also coming down from top lane, and I'm also coming from mid. So this is a really good point that we can kind of merge onto the enemy team. Now, we did get first down bot lane, um, but then we get the first kill in this little skirmish. I think Shen blew his flash, Torn, and Ignite to get that kill, but worth it. We get their blue buff, and that gives Udyr dominance in the jungle. We share a little bit of XP for everybody as our blue buff is still up. Udyr will not get behind. Um, but this does lead to the point that I am actually relatively behind in my lane now. Uh, it's not a massive issue for a Diana. As I said, pre-6, you are probably going to be not doing great in CS and a bit of pressure. But as soon as you hit 6, that's when people are going to probably start to be a bit scared of you. Um, so I'm probably just going to go for an early back. It will lead me going a little bit more behind in CS. But I would say overall worth it in the game. Uh, for me, leaving that, just helping to skewer that blue. But for my lane, personally, you know, that has put me in quite a tricky situation. Um, I think this game was about five days ago, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, well, it was around that. And I might have asked Udyr, could I have the next, well, the blue buff that is currently up, as I have gone behind in lane, and it will probably help me with XP as well as sustain, so I can actually farm a little bit. 
Now while moving to lane, let's just have a little look at top lane. Shen is applying pressure onto the Elise. Getting that early kill really has helped this Shen. Because, um, you know, Shen is a pretty damn good lane bully. Many people underestimate what a Shen can do. But if a Shen gets ahead, you're in a really bad situation. Because he is a big split pusher. And if you cannot handle the split pusher, if you can't kill the split pusher, you're in trouble. And I think, from what I recall, this that's what happens this game to a certain effect. Now, Uda has to be fairly careful here. You know, Mumu could be around this area trying to get revenge off uh, Uda getting his blue. But we get out safe and I get a blue buff myself. Uh, so build-wise, I have opted just at the beginning to get myself a second Doran's Ring. I recommend always kind of going that way and then probably moving into an early Zonia's. Uh, now, the old kind of Diana build was getting a very early Nasher's Tooth. Uh, I'm not sure if I get it this game because a lot of the time when you're playing against a ranged something or other, you don't have a lot of time to auto attack them. So the attack speed isn't going to be massively useful. The big thing that's useful is the spike damage. Now another tip when you're playing Diana, if you start W, you can actually, if you're against a champion you know 100% can range you, outrange you early on, and if you think you can do it quick enough, um, you can actually do race level 1 with your shield. It, will look, it worked a lot better when obviously race spawned at 140, but it still can work now. Um, but I don't know, you might be trading off less XP than you would normally get in mid. I, it, it's hard to say. Oriana has just hit level 6. Uses her full combo on me straight away. Udyr, I think at this point was looking to come into mid lane, but he drifted off to the side. He's coming in now, though, from behind the lane, pretty much. Use my E quite early on to try and get onto the Orianna, and I think we don't actually, we're not able to pick her up. So that's unfortunate. I do blow my Ignite there, but it's not a total waste. It does give her a little bit less health, as well as, um, you know, my extra 5 AP and AD. Anyway, she stays in the area, which honestly is not a very good move on her part. I just use ultimate. I didn't even need to get Q on her. Ultimate with W, easy kill, and make my way out there. So that was a mistake by Oriana, and that is getting me back into this mid lane. And you notice I say the mid lane, um, because this game we are actually doing very well in. Even with me being behind in CS, etc., we still had more map pressure than them with our Udi really shutting down in a Mumu earlier. This is why... why I do not rate Amumu as a very good jungler. Now, if you're bronze or if you're silver watching this video, you're probably thinking, Huzz, he's amazing. He's one of the best junglers. He's always banned in my games. The problem with Udyr, or with the problem with Amumu, sorry, is he's very predictable and he's very weak in his jungle early on. And if you can get somebody that can take advantage of that, or if you have a team, and even in the late game you know, stage, you can really do wonders against Amumu. Anyway, Udyr did go invade onto the Amumu's red buff. And actually got it and managed to survive with the Shen ult. So actually very well played by them guys. Um, managing to even kill the Amumu in the process. So yeah, this Amumu is not having a good game. And as I was saying, Amumu is basically the core of a lot of low yellow games. Like a Malphite as well. Because a lot of people stack up and they don't have the reaction time to you know use an ability to stop it happening. Or flash out the way, that type of thing. Um, where in higher lows, yeah, Mumu and Malphite aren't that scary. I would say Malphite is more scary than the Mumu because uh, it's less predictable. Malphite literally can just jump over a wall uh, out of nowhere, where obviously a Mumu has to hit his bandage toss before anything, where Malphite doesn't have to do that. Anyway, I have got a small level advantage, and I have caught up in CS now with the Orianna, so that's fairly good. Uh, I am moving over to the Amumu's blue buff as well. Now, as you can tell, this solo queue game, we were absolutely trying to just dominate this Amumu. We went for his buffs every single time. We're warding things. Um, so, yeah. Now, Oriana did actually dodge uh, my Q there because she went in instead of out. And that's probably the best way to dodge a Diana Q is just run towards the Diana. Um, but I still get a decent amount of damage on her with my W and R. Uh, still does quite a lot of damage just uh, by themselves. As you know, in the bottom left of the screen, I have got four points in my W, one in Q, one in E, and one in Ultimate right now. Uh, after maxing, uh, well, obviously maxing your ult first, then W, then Q, and then E. Now his blue buff has spawned, so if we just pan over there, you see my ward does have full vision of this blue buff. So any second now you're about to see me probably try and just get a little steal in there. I ignore him straight away, use both of my ultimate stacks and simply just flash away. So I drew three of them into the blue buff. I got the blue buff. Yes, I had to blow flash, but that's in you know worth it 100% as long as I don't die in the near future. With this Amumu being quite weak, I don't see it happening. So that was a 
pretty good play by myself, if I can say that. And that's something I would recommend. If you can get a jungler into a situation where you get him low, keep him there. Make sure he cannot get back into this game. Have full vision of the map. Don't let him gank. Don't let him get his buffs. Something like that will just guarantee you win the early game. Anyway, Orianna did get hit by my Q while she was trying to recall. And I do manage to do quite a little bit of damage to her. Using my ult stacks with my resets on my Q to get two of them. Um, you know, managing to do a fair bit of damage. Anyway, top lane is going, you know, better uh, for Shen. Got another kill onto the Elise. So he's doing rather well from that first... Well, his kind of first bird, I suppose. Um, getting the kill on the Elise near the blue buff stage of the game. Uh, anyway, I think I do give the blue buff to uh, Udyr here. That uh, because I got their blue buff, I don't really need it, and it will take me a long time uh, to actually go over there, and I'd probably just miss out on more XP and tower pressure. Anyway, our bot lane did have a good start, but they actually just got double killed without a Moomoo -Moo helping or anything like that. So that's a bit worrying, but it has to be said it is a Caitlyn Zyra. Zyra obviously being the main feature in that, uh, being very, very strong as a support. Uh, I rate Zyra support very highly, uh, where compared to a Graves Janna, Graves also has Ignite, no barrier. Uh, Graves will be kind of squishiest without the barrier there, um, but Janna, very good at pressuring when it comes to team fights, that type of thing, but very not very good when it comes to, you know, actually uh, lane fighting. Well, not great. She's she's okay. She's, like, average. Anyway, we do catch the Caitlyn. I don't know why Caitlyn stayed around so long. Literally, she stayed around um, way longer than she should have and gives Graves a free kill. So that's another mistake. And this is a mistake that when people say, what's the differences between high elo and low elo? That type of thing of overstaying happens way longer in low elo than it is high. Um, high elo knows, right, I've got this extra gold on my lane opponent. I need to use it to have an advantage. Uh, so you'll see high elo people basing all the time. It's, it, you know, they get their lane in a good situation, then they'll go base, use that gold, then come back. Get a kill, base again, or push the tower, then base, or roam. Uh, where a bronze player or a silver player would generally stay in their lane and try and farm as much as they can. Um, which, you know, is not always the best thing to do. Now, as you can see with me maxing my shield, as well as being slightly tanky with now a little bit of armor and the little bit of health that I have, Orianna cannot do any poke damage to me. Um, always using my W when she's trying to hit me with her ball. It's basically a null void Orianna that won't do anything to me. Anyway, there is a gank going up top lane. I am moving there, so we'll just watch my... Uh, watch the little fight as I'm going. Elise does repel back down, and as you can see, she is very squishy, so they do manage to pick her up. Amumu is in the area, so I was going to try and get a gank off there, but unfortunately, uh, missed the Q. Now, I would say that I haven't hit amazing Qs this game if I had to critique myself in any way. Uh, obviously, the early CS was an issue, but I did mention, you know, with me roaming, trying to get that blue buff, helping to get that blue buff, I did put myself in that situation. Um, but yeah, hitting Qs is a must on Diana. It gives you the extra ultimate, which is about an extra two, 300 damage, potentially. Let's just see how much I do right now. It's an extra 150, so by late game, it is about that amount. Um, so yeah, it's, I need to hit better Qs, but I would say uh, this was a late at night game. As you guys know, I do play late at night occasionally. And I was just in the mood to play Diana. There was no reasoning behind it. I knew she was very good against Orianna once you make max shield. And that was pretty much it. I hadn't played Diana in months. Uh, as I said, I used to play her. haven't played her in months and then went back into her. Anyway, roaming around the jungle, trying to pick up as much CS as possible. But unfortunately, uh, Graves did die again to the Caitlyn. Now, if you look at the CS difference between Caitlyn and Graves, it's a fair amount. And now they just got bot towers. So obviously, Shen is doing great in top lane. Udyr is doing fairly well better than well in jungle and I'm holding my own in mid lane a 10 CS behind in mid lane but do have that kill on her so if you look into the gold tabs just to get a more accurate uh, thing on the game now you can see the top lane is the big difference Shen is 2000 gold ahead we remember we did get that dragon earlier and I think we may have one turret compared to the enemies too oh no we don't we don't have any turrets right now on my side uh, jungle another big story to tell we have a 1100 gold lead uh, by Udyr Mid lane, a lot more even. I'm only 200 gold ahead. That's pretty much just the dragon, uh, as because she does have a little bit higher CS than me, although I do have the kill. Um, and then bot lane, Caitlyn and Graves. Caitlyn is ahead by 500, and then support, the uh, R support is ahead by 200, which is pretty much the dragon. 
so it's a relatively, well, I don't want to say close game right now because Shen, as I said, scales very, very good. Shen is one of the best top laners in the game. Not for damage. Uh, you don't build a Shen for damage. But if you do get a Shen that wins lane, if somehow a Shen kills his lane opponent again and again, you're in a huge situation right now. You are... Nobody can deal with his split push. Or if they do have to deal with it, they have to send two or three people just to stop Shen. Anyway, three of us are converging onto the Elise. We was going to wait, but honestly, there's no point. We're tanky enough to tank this tower very easily and then just move in for the kill. She does go up in the Repel trying to delay us a little bit more, but it does basically nothing. Udyr now on a killing spree, and I think we may even push for the top tower, or I might ping for it myself uh, and try to take it down with the Shen. Now, bottom lane, unfortunately, there's, we're just going to be taking turret here, so I'll, I'll move into this turret. I'm continuing up top. Anyway, Oriana does move into position. Fairly good gank, but gets herself in a very poor situation, being basically in the middle of all three. Now, well, that was quite bad by the Janna, honestly. And, well, I think they were actually pre-made, and they did very poor communication, as you'd probably imagine. Both of them kind of dodging out each other, which basically let the Caitlyn not go through. Well, that wasn't an, an all-bad situation. We did get the top tower. And two of them died, but we did get one kill for it. Udyr has moved into the area to try and help a little bit. Shen also using that great taunt, um, getting that kill, and then moving in to try and kill or finish off the Moomoo. So double kill by Shen. Udyr does go down, but I think Shen might be able to get away, and he does. So that's actually very well played by Shen, using that flash taunt again. Um, to his full advantage. Anyway, I'm going to move into the area. I know Caitlyn's going to be doing this. Now, this is another mistake. She shouldn't really be doing this. Now, you're about to see my burst. Use my ignite. She uses a barrier and she goes down. Uh, any second and bam. There you go. Killed the Caitlyn and I think I even got blue. I'm just about to get blue. So, over all that and then that trade, we actually came out on top. Um, we got the tower up top lane. We lost a few people, but I think we actually traded evenly with deaths in that whole fight. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. Um, also picked up the blue buff for myself. Probably going to take these wolves or not. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to move into to into the mid lane to try and cover the turret. Obviously my turret only being about two thirds health, you look at Oriana's below half health. So me being a melee champion, I have got advantage somehow on her tower health. Uh, so that's always a good thing. Obviously if you look into the stats of LCS and Worlds, normally the team, I think it's a, a, about a 60% win rate. If you get first tower in the game of winning the game, it's about 90% if you get first in Hib. Uh, it might, I think it's like 95% first Baron, you normally win the game, that type of thing. So first objectives or objective control is a very big thing in League of Legends and very underestimated in the lower ELO brackets, that type of thing. Where in higher ELO, it's not underestimated. They are the big driving force of the game. Uh, anyway, Udyr was having a little rumble with the Amumu and the Orianna. I was looking if I could do anything myself, but I decided just to back out there and go in for the mid tower, most likely any second. Mui and Udyr are waiting down in this bush, but bot lane, I have to be fairly careful as four people are in the area. Now, there is a ward here which wouldn't have spotted Amumu because he was in the line of sight, but now they have to be extremely careful with four people moving in. Now, unfortunately, that Janna uh, ultimate was mistimed. Uh, anyway, me and Udyr are moving in from the back, trying to clean them as much as we can. Moving in onto the Zyra, just wanted to take out somebody very quickly and then move on to probably the Umumu as he's not that tanky, so it would probably just give us another free kill. Pick up the Umumu and then move on to the Orianna. So I'm trying to do my best here to try and, you know, clean up. But anyway, Shenult comes in, which is actually pretty good. Stay on top of her and finish off the kill. Uh, obviously, Diana, well, Shen ulting a Diana is actually a very good choice, not just to make her alive a little bit more. Diana literally can jump on somebody's face, much like an Akali can, and give Shen the, the exact target you want taunted. And obviously the only taunted uh, target in that case was the Orianna, and it did give Shen the kill, which Shen now is 703 with 140 CS, nearly double his lane opponent in farm, as well as 7 kills ahead. So as you can see, this game, it was a lot of it was Shen doing very well. But the blue buff kind of snowballed this game. Blue buff gave Shen the first kill. Um, well, obviously, bot lane, my bot lane got first blood. But, I mean, first blood for his lane. Shen picked that up. We got the blue buff. Kept Mu a Mumu behind so he couldn't really gank very well in the early stages of the game. I managed to get back into the game, getting the kill on Orianna. Catching up in CS, that type of thing, with Udyr also doing very, very well. 
Bot lane has been a bit of a headache in this game. They did very well at the start, but they kind of gave just a few kills away. I would probably claim that was mainly to Zyra. Obviously, Caitlyn just staying back shooting as she does. Zyra probably really getting that poke in with her ultimate, knocking them up in the air, doing a really good job. Anyway, we are grouping mid lane. Shen at the moment does not have ultimate, so you will see him grouping. And we're going to take down this first mid turret and maybe even try to push a little bit more. Now, Udyr is fighting the Elisa 1v1, and it's never a good situation once your jungler uh, can kill the enemy top lane. Um, I mean, not a very good situation for the enemy team. Anyway, the blue buff is up, so I'm probably going to see if I could take it, but we decide just to go in for an engage. Very good ultimate combos, as you can see, and a good Piltover, and a good Amumu ult. So that is the problem with the enemy team. I am very low right now, 50-odd health. But it does actually, we do manage to get uh, an advantage in that fight. Udyr did go down. I was on 50 health, but managed to survive somehow. And managed to get out with my life. Uh, so as you can see, their team is actually very good synergy. They have uh, the Orianna, Amumu, Zyra, etc. All landing on top of you as what happened then. If they were stronger in this game, they would win hands down. Uh, if they got the early lane phase that they probably wanted, um, that they would do very well. But that's the thing. Mumu does not give the early lane phase advantage. He's much a late game uh, team fighting jungler. Now, unfortunately, these guys did overstay. Good general keeping people off them. Graves is going to try and get away himself. And I think most of them might get away eventually. Uh, I'm moving in to try and just give my little bit of support here. So let's just see if I can manage to do anything. At least does get in a little bit of my path. Now Shen, this is arguable. You could see I was trying to just jump away or run away. I do pick up the Elise, but she's worth no money. And Shen, I don't want to say he baited me. But him going back in just, well, it, it forced me to go back into the fight. When I was trying to kind of just run away at that point. Uh, so that is a death on my part that really should have been avoided. My first death of the game, unfortunately, being 5-1-4. Uh, and obviously that... Fifth kill, uh, I wouldn't really class it as a kill because it was probably only worth about 80 gold or so. So not a big amount. Anyway, I will be respawning soon. Uh, my build right now, if you look into it, I haven't looked in it in a while, is Death Cap, um, Arm Guard, Sorcerer Boots and Double Rings. Now there was a little bit of a play trying to be made here. It was a, it was a little bit clever, but it just didn't work out right. Uh, as I say, having a champion like Diana that you can literally jump onto your target is a much easier thing to channel uh, than something that has to just run at somebody much like an Udyr. But anyway, they are going to try and kill the Caitlyn or anybody really in this situation. Udyr is running after the, the Zyra and probably going to do a fair amount of damage. But there is a quite poor team fight happening right now. But Shen, as you can see, being the mix of everything, being as tanky as he is, managing to tank four people's damage uh, with Caitlyn obviously coming in. And coming out on top. So Shen is still alive right now. Going to try and do his best anyway to get a double kill maybe. Um, so there's the legendary. He's currently 10-0. Now he's very low health. And bam, double kill. Managed to survive. Currently on 50 health himself. And he's currently 11-0-4. Uh, so very rarely you see a very fed Shen like this. But I have to give props to the guy. He has done very well this game. And had very, you know, a, bit, a very big impact. Obviously, mid lane had its ups and downs. Early game was quite a hard lane for me. But once I got them W spell advantages, uh, as well as keeping up in the CS, then, you know, as a Diana, you can do very, fairly well. And when we was in the situation of the game where Orianna wants to poke you, you know, keep poke, 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 and then all in you with ultimate, she isn't able to do that against a Diana maxing shield as, you know, the shield is enough to just get rid of all that damage. Anyway, going to take their race. And Z Zyra was looking to come into the bush, but she does... Uh, kind of just ward it before we go in unfortunately and she does get away so if you look into the gold advantages now obviously the big one you will see is the shen to the elise shen is like double elise's gold so that kind of just tells the story of mainly this game right now uh shen having a 5,000 gold advantage when we've got a 9,000. so he is half of our advantage right now just him on his lane opponent now the jungle he is 2,400 ahead uh, there's a little engage. We just catch the Zyra very quickly. Gives another kill to, to Shen. Uh, mid lane, I am 8,300. She is 6,700. Uh, so yeah, this game has kind of snowballed right now. We are moving in for the kill or relatively soon. Orianna, I don't... Does she have ultimate? She does have ultimate, so I'm not entirely sure why she didn't ultimate when the Amumu ult was down. 
She uses it now, does get a four-man ultimate, uh, but it was, you know, not a great time. She does move in to, with the Ignite on myself, and I managed to survive again on low health. Now, I did manage to pick up the Amumu kill with Ignite, uh, so that does lead me to being 6-1-5. Not a bad score, uh, coming to probably the last 5-10 minutes of this game. Now, Graves is fairly low health. At least does use the Repel, and obviously being the new Repel style, she is unable to jump anywhere because everybody was outside the little ring. Now, Shen does jump on her face with Ignite and just gets another kill. 112 gold there right there for Shen, uh, moving him into 1304. Now, if you look into his build, now, I would not recommend this build to anybody who is not as fed as this Shen. He's got more Malmortius, Sunfire Cape, Phage, which will eventually be building into a Triforce, uh, and Mercury Treads, and some random Rejuve Bead, which I think was from level 1. Uh, so yeah, that is a very odd Shen build, and it would not work at all if he wasn't as fed as he was. Uh, he's only been able to bully as much because he's got a very big level advantage, um, as well as obviously having them items at this stage of the game is, you know, quite beefy. Uh, where if that more Mammortius, it's not the most useful item on Shen late game, um, has to be said. And Ariana does move into the area. I'm looking to try and just get a sneaky kill here, unfortunately. I miss my E, so I can't get her into the, you know, right area. Now, Shenalt does come down, and I'm going to try and do my best to survive. Basically, just making people stay a little bit longer. Now, Elise does pick up her first kill of the game, which is arguable right now. Obviously, she probably wants to get a kill on the board, but that has completely reset her gold, which makes her worth 300 gold a kill. Um, so being as weak as she is, she's just probably going to be giving more gold to the enemy team than she should. Anyway, good general, good flash general uh, to go into the Amumu, but I don't think they can make anything of it right now. Mudir was looking to go a little bit more deep, but Amumu is being fairly tanky, uh, does manage to get out there alive. So obviously the rating of this game right now, this was at the stage where I think I was Diamond 3. I am bouncing for those who want a little update, I am bouncing between Diamond 4 and... Uh, and Diamond 2 pretty much all the time now. Um, so I would probably class myself as a Diamond 3 player. Um, I think right now I am Diamond 4 80 points. So that is one with my MMR I get about 20 per win. Uh, so I'm one win away from going back into promotion series. So anyway not much going on here so I'll move back on to a little team fight that's going on. Caitlyn does manage to pick up the Janna basically for free. There's a five man clump here with only three being the area for my team. They use Shirelli's to try and catch onto the Graves. Moomoo Bandage comes out, and as you can see, this is what I kind of mean with the Moomoo being kind of useless. Uh, with people having escapes, jumps, and all that type of thing, a Moomoo cannot get on people that can just simply jump away. Pretty good Shenot here, but uh, it was arguable. He does get his first death. I use my Zonius to try and get away. Use my other ultimate to just jump away. And yeah, I don't really... It wasn't really needed to do that, to be honest. But they're all very low, but I do actually manage to get caught out myself, and yeah, that's not great. But... All of them are very weak for Graves, and it's just really unfortunate that he doesn't have any mana. If he had mana, you'll see these buck shots coming in there and killing everybody. Uday does get oh Graves does get a, a double kill. Uday does move into the area and an immediate run onto the Caitlyn, but unfortunately, I think she does manage to get away. Leads Oriana open, gets another kill. So in that, I think we started. Well, Shen went down, so you wouldn't really count him in the fight. Um, but it was like a 2v5 at one point, moved Udyr in to make it another 2v5, um, and then eventually 1v3. And we did come out, I think, relatively even in that trade, so that's not all bad. It would especially come out even now with uh, Zyra going down. Now, these are one things I will say, you know, using some of the spells at the right time, that flash was the most wasted flash, you know, you can ever do. She was dead 100%, and she still tried to use flash. Anyway, looking at my build now on Diana, got my death cap, got my Zonyas, a very important item on Diana. As I was mentioning, you jump in with your ultimate and use Zonyas. You know, use your E before Zonyas, preferably, um, but it will allow you a couple seconds, obviously 2.5 seconds, to be immune in the middle of a team fight when you've clumped everybody together and give your team basically a very good team fight boost. Um, moving obviously into another blasting wand, which will be a abyssal, I believe. As they are very high, you know, AP damages. They've got an Elise, uh, Zyra, etc. Anyway, Elise was trying to delay us, but she is so weak, she's basically doing nothing to us. She does repel back down, and she just simply goes down. Now, again, I will say, wasting summoner spell, she was dead 100%, and she still tried to use it. Good Orianna ult there, to be honest, but it's pretty much useless. Shen gets a very good taunt off onto the Orianna, and he might have even caught a Mumu. 
I jump over everybody's face and gets the kill for myself. Zyra is moving in. Now that is a very good Zyra ult. Uh, if they were in the middle of a team fight, hitting four people up into the air is very, very good. But we do pick up the Baron as well as a couple of kills and we're probably just going to apply a little bit more pressure. Now Kanan, as you can see, is split pushing, which is probably the best thing she could have done in this situation. Uh, it, well... She didn't really get anything for it apart from CS. You know, if she got this tier 2, that would have been a little bit better than getting nothing. But still, not great. Now, she has decided to stay, which is very questionable, to be honest. She is trying to bake now. But I don't know why she decided to try and stay. In the end of the day, it's a Baron Graves uh, with Ignite. So, yeah, she really had no chance. She did blow the barrier in there, um, but she does manage to go down. I am picking up the dragon for my team right now. Having no attack speed in my current build, in my runes and masteries, no attack speed, um, is causing a bit of a slow dragon. Now, the reason I do not take attack speed on Diana, I did mention it earlier, but because I'm against a ranged champion. If I was against, say, a Zed or a Kha'Zix, something like that, I would probably take the attack speed as I will be auto-attacking people more. But as I mentioned earlier, against a ranged champion, you really just need to jump in with a lot of burst and then that's it. Jump back out or run back out and do that over and over again, which, you know, you're not going to get many auto attacks off. Anyway, their red buff is up, so I'm going to take that where Graves actually finds the Zyra and manages to kill her. Obviously, Graves being the high burst champion that he is, does a pretty good job of that. Shen just got a three-man taunt, so very well played by Shen there. If we move on to the team fight thing, I don't think it's really, uh, you know, important. But Shen picks up another double kill, very good taunt again. And triple kill for Shen. So that moves him into being 17-1-7. Uh, so I don't want to make this commentary just seem, you know, it was all Shen. He did a very good job. Can't take that away from him. But obviously there was plays. And hopefully I would just... This whole thing was, I think, uh, to show you how to play against a Orianna as a melee champion. Especially as Diana maxing your shield and how to deal with it. As well as, you know, the pretty good blue steel among other things. So anyway, this was Diana mid lane. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's always good to see a really fed Shen, I suppose. But anyway, thanks for watching. More content to come soon. And remember, I'll be streaming every now and then on twitch.tv slash huzzygames.